All right, guys, so here's a guitar. We need to sign up and restring. And it's a hammer. So let's get in here and put this thing up on the bench and throw some new strings on it and kind of just check this thing out. Here we go. Okay, so nice little Telecaster. Uh, you got a cool looking bridge right here. Um, black pick guard, maple neck, maple fingerboard, transparent finish, uh, Spurzel locking tuners. This is a made in USA Hamer. Kind of cool. I own this one, it's for sale. I think it's on the website. I do have a website now if you guys want to check out zimsguitars.net and I try to um, have all my inventory on there. These strings, uh, you can just feel how much dirt and rust are on these strings. It, this thing definitely needed a restring. Okay, so I've got the strings loosened up. Okay, so I got the strings loosened up here. You just go on the back of these locking tuners and you loosen this and that will allow you to pull the strings out of here. So I don't know if uh, those tuners are stock to the guitar. I think they probably are. And the reason I say that is because I don't see any string trees on here. So these are like staggered. And so you've got uh, lower ones down here that give you that break angle over the nut. Instead of having a string tree. These things have been on here a long, long time. And I'm just going to cut them off right here. Just cut them off right there so you don't have to pull a ton of string through the back here. I see some of my... Uh, I see that was loose. So I can put that back in. That happens a lot. Okay, so that little ferrule fell out. Now, I had this problem before, and one of the comments was to take a little bit of that shielding tape that you uh, most luthiers have, most guitar guys have. Wrap it around there a couple of times, and then shove it back down in there and see if it holds it in place. See? So, uh, that was... Uh, from a from a viewer that came from a comment telling me how to you know get that to stay in there really good and it worked fine so yeah thank you to whoever added that comment okay so I put my notch straight edge on here and then with my filler gauge at ten thousandths you just see if you've got any neck relief here and it looks really flat, just a little bit right there at the 10th fret. Little tiny bit. So, uh, and then it's nice and tight again here. So we've got just a little bit of relief right there in the neck. You can, oh, it's tight right there. Maybe 5 thousandths, 10 thousandths fits through there. So that's just one way of looking at it. So I think I'm going to leave the truss rod right where it's at and then I'm just going to take some thousand grit sandpaper and we'll fold it over a couple of times and with my fretboard guard we're just going to hit these frets a little bit get the dirt off of them hardly um, as far as fretware on this guitar, 
I don't see any fretware. Little, maybe a little tiny bit on the second, third. There's flattening out a little bit. But I don't think this guitar was played very much. And for a guitar that's probably 20 years old, I don't think it was played very much. There we go. That does a really nice job cleaning the frets. Makes it quick and easy. Okay, let's put some of my Dunlap 65 on a rag. And then we're going to just clean the fretboard. This is a used guitar and uh, it's hard, hard to sell a used guitar when it's got somebody's old fingerprints and somebody's old DNA from their fingers all over the fretboard. That's the reason to shine these babies up. I know that the Hamer guitars were made very popular by uh, Rick Nielsen from Cheap Trick. All those crazy Cheap Trick guitars, a lot of those things were Hamers. There we go. Oh, knock the, knock the top hat off. Three-way switch. Okay, so one thing you can do with your uh, with your three-way switch to make sure it stays on there, we're going to take a little tiny bit of some of the blue painter's tape. And let's just wrap a little bit of this around the tip. And let's see what happens when we install this back on there. Squeeze it down on that tape. And it'll help it to stay in place there. Get some of the... Shine it up. Get fingerprints on it. Shine the chrome a little tiny bit. There we go. Okay. Today's string choice. Today's string choice. Ernie Ball, super slinky, 9 through 42s. Made in beautiful Coachella, California. Definitely the most popular string I sell out of my store is Ernie Ball strings. Fret ends feel nice on this guitar. I was like, oh, wait a minute. I didn't address these fret ends. But they're nice. So, don't need to do that. String through the back. I do one string at a time. A lot of guys, I'll see them. Put all six strings through there. Okay, so with locking tuners, pull the string through nice and tight, all the way through. Pull it through nice and tight, come down here and tighten it up. Super quick and easy. My A string is a 32 gauge. Looks like we've got like a really nice nylon nut on this one. Doesn't look to be bone. It could possibly be bone.
pull it nice and tight and then tighten it up down here on the bottom hand tighten it not necessary to put a bunch of wraps, string wraps around it. And again, there's no there's no uh, string trees on here because these uh, tuners are locking tuners and they have different heights to them. Yes, yeah, so guys, leave me some comments. Let me know what you think about Hamer guitars. If you got any Rick Nielsen stories. The saddles look a little bit weird how some of them are a little side to side. And don't these saddles look a little bit weird to you guys? They're uh, not really straight. This one's kind of off to an angle a little bit. But I'm just going to leave those. But yeah, let me know if you got any Rick Nielsen stories. I've seen Cheap Trick um, probably... Um, I think I've seen them three times. Now once was way back in the 80s. Cheap Trick, Rat, and Poison. Do you remember, guys, remember that, Tori? Now you got to be an old guy to remember that one. But it was the Cheap Rat Poison Tour. But, uh, <clears throat> Cheap Trick is a great band. Okay, let's do a headstock tuner on this thing. Like I do in every video, throw it up on your knee. String height is a little high for my taste, but Sometimes, uh, being in the used guitar shop here, if you just really slam the action on, on these things, they still kind of move around a little bit. And so, uh, I've started to keep my action a little bit higher because after a guitar hangs on the wall for a month or two, it kind of moves around a little bit. Somebody will pick it up, it'll have dead frets, you know, because I set the action too low, so... I've been keeping the action a little bit higher on some of them. There it is, guys. It's a hammer tally. Cool guitar. Let's do this now. Let's look in the guitar vault and see what other cool items we have in there. Okay, let's see what's in the vault today. We've got a Fender 1981 Fender Bullet 
it looks like a strat the body is a little bit smaller than a strat maple neck two single coils beautiful condition 1981 USA met Fender Bullet before they moved all their operations to Japan and started making the Squire series this is the real deal 1981 Fender Bullet super sick little guitar tons of fun to play let's take a look at the back of the guitar here it's in great condition very lovely little guitar tons of fun there it is guys thanks for watching everybody have a great day go buy a guitar